How do? How are we doing? Good. So, uh, final part with Paul. If you are just tuning into this, go and find part one. Lad used to work at Forest Bank. I am going to put, over the next couple of weeks, all the interviews I've done, a link in part one. So, if you find Paul part one, there'll be a link underneath for part two, part three, and part four. Before I even get into it, I've put this lad off three or four times, four or five times for this chat. Um, so I do appreciate your time, mate. Oh, no, don't worry. He's been completely honest. We just had a little chat before we start. Two parts to this. Um, the second part is special measures, what that means in a prison. So obviously, specifically, we'll be talking about Forest Bank, which is a private prison in Salford. The first part, we're going to talk about a pocket. I know a little bit about it. As always, I'll have my two, two penneth. But something that's important for me, this. Um, it's not checking a cheap shot at Forest Bank. I work there. Private prisons um, are hard work. Yeah. Used to be low paid, way, way lower than public sector prisons and nowhere near as many staff. Very similar now. Similar pay, similar management yeah. structure, yeah. and similar conditions. So this is a message for all the people who work in private, well, in any prison now, who are struggling. Do you know what? I know it's tough, it's hard. Particularly in Forest Bank, so uh, good on you. Um, we'll talk about that after. So, pocker, what is a pocker, mate? Yeah, well, proceeds of crime, um, for any crime, obviously, which involves um, theft or or money laundering, tax evasion, that kind of thing, what happens is if once you get sentenced and do your time, or get sentenced and you're in prison, then after that, which I didn't really know too much about, obviously, if you've people have watched or know me, they know my story or have watched the first three uh, episodes of this, you know what I did with taking DVDs and games and selling them online from, from within the prison. So, from an officer point of view really, I didn't have anything to do with poker because it's not something we really get, you know, no. for officers. If someone in a prisoner comes to you and say, do you know about poker, you'd, you'd know a little bit, but then you'd point them in the right direction uh, uh, in the jail to somebody who knows a little bit more. I, b I believe um, it was designed for these big drug dealers and that. Yeah, so that yeah. when they were found guilty, they could take them to account, and the idea is to retrieve money. That's it. I mean, that's that's the feedback that I've got. I mean, I've only been what I've been told from the solicitor that I had, because I didn't really know anything about. I was naive to it, to be honest, because obviously I was an idiot for what I did. I was taking the games and whatever, and you're selling them, um, and then as it transpires that if you know you're going through and you're worrying about going to jail and bit, you know an ex-officer in there, so you've got that worry, but then. You get hit with oh by the way you've got proceeds of crime and you're like well I don't I know what it is but can you can you elaborate? So basically, you know the state want the money back. They, from, they're looking. From, from what? They, I'll tell you one that one lad we had on healthcare was a good lad. He started growing weed. Yeah, he, he yeah, got yeah. a couple of legit businesses. Somebody said well you make a lot of money from weed. Started growing weed. He'd been at it a couple of years. How they go at it? They say right if you've made a grand this week that we've caught you, then they say, you've been at it two years, we're gonna take it that you've made a grand a week and we're gonna come after you. Yeah. That's how they work, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it's, from what I've been told, it's only come, I think, 2015, uh, the police may have, have, have uh, developed a big head, head sort of office for proceeds of crime, spent millions on it, um, but only for up to now have only, you know, from from what the money they've paid out, they've only received a fraction Let me, back into the well, pot. Well, while you're doing that, the last time I saw figures, a while ago, but in a paper, legit figures, cost about 50 million, put 50 million in, got 8 million back. Yeah. So another absolutely fucking amazing, fantastic. Yeah, and, it, and from what I've been told, as again, you say, it's all about the big hitters, you know, the lads who have, you know, stashed money. And it's all, it, it seems to me that it's more like, if it's a, it's a monetary thing, people are white collar crime, so to say. I mean, don't get me wrong, I took games. I didn't take it off at a person per se. It was a company that was within the jail and um, whatever. And as I say, probably they were getting tax benefits from using prisoners as for for labor, doing what they were doing, which is, which is par for the course. Um, so yeah, so it was built up for those, but things like tax evasion, money laundering, things like that, if, if you're robbing the state of, of money um, that you're not paying tax on, they seem to come down 
a lot harder than that. Um, from what I can only go from what I've seen and from what I've read onto that. I mean, as I say, now looking back from lads, I remember a lad that we had in the, uh, he was a reception orderly, older fella, scouse lad, um, first time in jail, and he, he tax evasion, uh, he had companies, um, and it was a couple of million, I think. Dead sound fella, I can't remember his name. The lads who, who listen to this will know him. Ray, Ray something his name was. Um, and he was, but he said, listen, he said he proceeds of crime came after him, Pocker, and he said, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to pay it back because that's my nest egg. You know, all I've done was tax it. You know, all I've done for tax evasion. Yeah, I paid, yeah, me, we're not I paid me stamp. You know what I mean? He said yeah. I paid tax, but I cut corners. I said, but that money there that I've siphoned off. He said, I'm not going to let them have that. I said because that's my. I'll do the extra time in jail or whatever, and then I'll come out to that. How many politicians do you think are? board of directors on big companies these big companies plenty of really high profile politicians spouses partner whoever you know make millions never pay no, no tax no exactly so and that, it's, that, it's not no it's it's annoying and as i say from my from my point of view and from my case anyway so what happened obviously i i had a ballpoint figure of what they said to me that's what you're so when they said that's what you've took and that this is what you've got from eBay or, or this is when your bank account that's X amount well I think it was like ninety six thousand pound obviously it's a lot of money don't get me wrong over a period of time so I was like ninety six thousand so then obviously you get your sentence and you say right you've got fifteen months so you're worrying about that but then they say oh by if you've got this proceeds of crime hanging over so you go to jail you do your time and this is all still going on so even I'm getting letters you know through the through, through into, into your cell saying. You know, you still owe this. What are you gonna do to pay it back? Now I've got nothing. I'm living at my mum's. You know, I've got a shitty tin pot car um, that I drive around. It's not worth anything. I can't even open the windows. I have to really wind down the window to open up the door. Every oh, don't even go there. Um, the heaters don't work. I was driving here to pick it up uh, to oh, meet God. you, and I was trying to wipe through the windows because the heating doesn't work in the car. So I've got nothing. Um, so they said, right, you still got this money to pay. So I'm like, well, I can't pay it. I haven't got anything. So they go through all your finances, go through everything, which I've done with solicitor. So they say, right, so this should have been done while I was in jail. Because what they've said to you then is, well, if you can't pay, they'll go through all your finances and say, right, well, if you've got 400 quid, well, we want that 400 quid. Or if you've got 10 grand, we want 10 grand. That's it. That, that's that's worth they're taking everything from you. But I've got nothing to take. So if so, this is again when I came out of jail. I went to court again. Once I'd come out, it got adjourned again. I was meant to be in December to talk about it. It got adjourned again till June. It's dragging out. So it? it's dragging out since. So since my crime that I did. So by the time I go to court, it's gonna be nearly five years, four and a half years from the actual crime that I did. So I've had that over for four, three and a half years over my head. Um, but now they're saying, well, if you can't pay it, or they say to me, right, Mr. Alberson, you've got, well, we think you can pay whatever it meant, four thousand pounds. They'll come up with that. If I can't pay that within twelve months or six months or whatever time frame they give me, then I can get sent down for another eighteen months. So, and then once I once I do that, if I get sent down, the money's still there, the debt is still there. So I've, even though I've got an eighteen months again, then the debt doesn't go anywhere. So that debt stays with me pretty much, basically, for all my life. Um, so I could get sent down for not paying the extra amount, yep. which is going to be more than the actual initial sentence, which is just a money money uh, back scheme. And the money doesn't go to anyone. It doesn't go to you. If I took it from you, the money doesn't go back to you. It goes into the police fund. Um, so it's a money making exercise, plus they add interest to it. Well, it's not a money making exercise, is it? Because well, it runs at a back, massive, runs a massive loss. loss. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's that. So it, it's 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 a bad, bad, bad thing to have over you. But it it, it doesn't make any any sense. So when you try and say to your listener, to your listener listen, I, I've admitted to what I've done. Um, you've given me sentence. I've gone to jail. I've done my sentence. You know, I've come out on my tag. That's been sorted. My tag's come off. I've got a license to however that long is. That's fine. But now you're telling me, once that's all done, I pay the debt to society, or whatever they want to call it. Um, now you're telling me I've got another sentence on, on top of that, and then if in the future if I, anything happens to if you come into any money, if you, you know if you get a good job or you win a scratch card or you, you know you inherit money, then they can come, they can just knock on you know send you a letter say what what yeah, determines don't. whether they, they this pocket whether they go after you because obviously I've met loads of lads, armed robbers, made money, got out, no pockets. 
Exactly. Well, the way, the way I was described to it, the, 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 my solicitor was like, well, they're not coming after you, they're coming after these lads who have siphoned off millions or they've got it in the, hidden away somewhere. They're the ones that they're, they're going to go after. They're not going to go after you, we've got, we've got, you know, you've come out and you've you admitted you've got nothing or, or whatever. Obviously, I went to, to prison, I, I shared a cell with a lad um, who worked with Forest Bank and he's obviously had to pay whatever he's had to pay uh, for his situation. Everyone's different. Um, but I don't know how how it you know I, so I don't know if like in six months or six years time you know I've I've sort of I've got somewhere to live I've got my own place I've got my own car I've got a good job doing well for myself are they gonna knock on your door and say basically we want this now so I don't I don't know how much that worked because even even when I was coming out I said listen I've got X amount I had money saved up because not a lot just a couple of hundred quid or however many hundred quid it was you know if if they said at the time I was in jail you've got eight hundred quid in the bank. We're going to take that. So if I wanted that as a deposit for a flat, that's gone. So they they literally leave you with nothing. They take everything you've got, whatever's in your bank, and you're supposed to start again. So it, it's it's a it's a convoluted. I don't know. I don't know how it works. It doesn't make much sense. Um, but it's just another thing that people probably don't know about, but people have to deal with. How's it affecting you at the minute? Are, are you just right? There's a chance you're going to go to prison. If they want money, you ain't got money going to send you back to prison yeah yeah well I think that's how it works I mean they'll say to me again because when it keeps getting a jam for some reason um, because I used to well I had a house uh, with my son's uh, mum um, they they thought well you, you still you're because I'm still on the mortgage on the house uh, but I have no financial it, that was wiped out you know when, when we split up but they're saying well you know you, you're still on the mortgage and the only reason I'm on the mortgage was because um, Archie's mum needed me to be on a mortgage she couldn't afford on her own so yep. I w it wasn't anything other than that well people do that don't yeah, they you, you so I've just stayed and it, it's, it's just one of them things that, 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 that's what it was but because just over these last six eight months the house prices have started going up a little bit then there's equity in the house so then they've come and said well there's equity in this house you're half of that this is what we want and I was like well no because I've not been living here for years and years it's got the, the equity there is not mine she's paid the mortgage herself. she's paid the mortgage i've got i've got no and i never have wanted anything from it because it's her house yep so now they're looking at saying well no you know if we tell you you, you know you that house is up for sale then your son and your your son's mum will have to sell the house so that's an, an extra that's that's the worst thing that, that I, w I was worried about or i'm still worried about because i've been adjourned again till june or, or whatever even if it gets to that i might get adjourned again um but it's one of those things you're just trying to get a out of your mind really because I'm just trying to concentrate with just you know getting back back to normal and getting employment and, and trying to get back on my feet and um, normally um, and I've just got to put that to the back burner because if you know you've been worrying about it that much you know is what's to say if I worry about it for another six months get to join again till another six months because oh, it's obviously not high priority the case was never my case was never high priority because I get getting dragged out for that long so there's not, not so really much to do try and gain some employment and just crack yeah, on until, yeah, yeah. until you um, go to court that's it yeah I mean I was doing little bits I've been applying for everything obviously it's difficult when you get out and you don't realise the things that you know hamper you um, I was doing part time work I'm on benefits at the moment which is neither here nor there I was doing just delivery work um, with the dropping food off and that but that that's finished the restaurants not there uh, has gone under really so yeah so I've got a few irons in the fire kind of thing I'm doing I'm doing a university talk tomorrow um, which I managed to, a friend has, has got in touch with a uni, so I'm doing that. Um, and I'm hoping to get into that. I've got another one lined up with a bit of luck. Um, and that's basically giving talks to criminology classes, uh, telling, you know, about the situations that I've encountered within prisons and my experience of being in prison as well. Um, so I'm going to go down that route, hopefully trying to give talks. If, if that can open up an avenue for me, we're going to schools, colleges, any training, that kind of thing. Um, and as I say, I'm looking maybe to do my own podcast where I was chatting to you about it before. I've, I've been speaking to a few old, old colleagues that have got in touch with me. Um, so I'm looking at starting my own podcast, maybe just doing talks with, with ex-staff, um, even ex-prisoners, if, if it gets the word gets about, just having chats on there about Forest Bank and having a laugh yep. at old stories and go down that route. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going. And as I say, and hopefully I've, I've, I've done a couple of qualifications through probation and that with uh, building sites and whatnot. Um, just to just to get some money coming in by that time, um, but as I say, it's it's weird. Even like we were talking about the last time we spoke, um, you don't realise like things like silly things like car insurance. 
Right, just... Right, I, I understand, you know, you know, you're good at prison or whatever. I had no idea and I've never thought about this, so... Just tell people how much your car insurance was. I it was about 400 quid a but year. Pre before, pre previous before, to that, yeah, yeah. did you have, like, full no claims or something like that? It was just no. Well, yeah, I've never claimed. I've never had a prang. I've, I've never had um, a point. I had points a couple of times, but years all null and void now. Years ago, so yeah, I think it was just a standard car insurance. I think I paid four hundred and thirty odd quid or whatever it was when I came, yeah. before I went in. So yeah, so I came out of jail, uh, picked my car back up and whatever, and then um, applied for car insurance. So yeah, did a quote, blah blah blah. Have you, you know, have you got any points? No, you do your ticks as normal. Any convictions? Any convictions, which I thought, driving convictions? No, ticked it. Blah, I, I've blah, always blah. thought that was driving convictions. Yeah, so I ticked it, no no problem, insured, blah, blah, blah. Two weeks later, I get an email saying we've cancelled your car insurance. I was like, that's a bit weird. Rang them up, why, what's that about? Well, you've not declared that you've got an outstanding prison um, because you're on licence, yeah. it's ongoing. I was like, you not clicked yes on your, on, your, on your form, on your application. I said, well, to be honest, I said, I didn't realise that was the case. I just thought, like you, have you yeah, got any points? Yeah, I honestly thought it was driving, driving, driving convictions, convictions yeah. yeah. So have you been banned, have you been into, even if you've been into jail for driving offences or whatever? I was like, no, I said, no, I, I, I didn't realise, I'm sorry, but you can't just cancel me policy. Well, you need to, you know, you need to put on this. So I was like, well, why? I said, because I've never, you know, it's not affecting. Yeah. So they said, well, what have you been in jail for? I said, well, I told them, I said, you know, it's theft after the money laundering. Um, well, right, okay, but we've cancelled it. Um, because you've basically lied. So I was seeing my arse then, so I was like, how can you tell me I've lied? I said it was, if I didn't realise, you know, genuine. I didn't think that. Um, so you can't just cancel me policy just because I've been inside, in jail. It's discrimination, surely. No, that's just policy. So then you, you start getting irate down on the phone. I want to speak to your uh, supervisor or whatever. But then they said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll just, we'll just do another quote. You know, we'll just do a revised quote. Yep. Tick that you've been, you know, you've got an outstanding, you're on licence or whatever. Right, okay, just, we'll do that because it's, because they've cancelled it, they, they charge you for cancelling your, yep. your policy anyway. So I had limited money, so that was an extra money that I did, didn't need. Um, so yeah, so I put the quote through again. I think the quote for the exact same thing, but just to tick that I've been in jail or I've got a licence uh, outstanding, it went to two and a half grand. From? From 400. Wow. So, that was, and I was just like, how can you justify it? It's just you like can't... a group one car in it as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's just a little farty car. So I was just like, how, that? how can you do that? I mean, don't be wrong. Yeah, I've been in prison. I was, I was naughty. Yeah, I understand that. I said, but, you know, I'm out. It's not a driving conviction. And then they were, they were like, well, you should have told us. But if you killed someone uh, in the car, then you, you've not told us you've been inside. I was like, I've never, it's not a driving. I said, it's nothing to do with driving. It doesn't affect my ability. I said, so that affects me, my, my life insurance. If I get life insurance, does that affect that? I've got to pay five times more than, the, you know, if I insure my house, yeah, I've got to pay five times more because I've been inside. It doesn't make any sense. No. So I just thought that was that one policy of that, that, that one specific company. But no, it turns out that you went on every one. <laughs> Put this, put the thing in. I know it's five times. I was just, Have you come against any more hurdles because you've been in prison? Not, not really. Just job wise. Just job wise has been a struggle because, as I say, it, you send off. I mean, because I worked in the, in the jail for that long and I was happy doing it and I loved the job. I didn't really apply for any other jobs. I think that's uh, other than worrying about the house you miss you send your son because of your pocket. I think losing your job. For you, it's probably been worse than going to prison because yeah, I mean yeah, because I was at a decent, a decent wage and well, you loved all it, the time. You? Hey, you loved it. I loved my job. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, I loved going to work and having a laugh and what whatever. Um, so there's that to it, and then obviously the, there's the thought of going to jail and the thought of whatever and losing. You see, not seeing your friends anymore and, and all that, but losing your job and then it's monetary, as I say, because I lived in Manchester. Uh, I split up with my partner, so I moved all the way back, and I literally had. I had nothing, um, just the, the wages I had from from whatever. Um, so yeah, so that dwindles, and I literally I'm on you're on benefits now. So I'm on 150 quid every two weeks, which is you know once you pay your bills and your car, your car insurance. Once <laughs> pay insurance, car insurance, yeah. Well, yeah, and uh, my phone bill and whatever, and you got to get petrol and you got to pick Archie up from school and do whatever you're doing and, and do your running around and, and eating and just go and just living. So it leaves you with nothing. Um, so yeah, the whole thing really, it's just a, but as I say, because 
I wasn't looking actively for work. My CV, if you look at actually what I've done in, in my career, it's good. You know, it's a lot of responsibility and there's a lot of stuff that I was good at that you think would apply elsewhere. But there's that many people out of work or there's that many, and I'm 42, 40, just turned 43, so there's that to it. So you're not, you're not a young person anymore. So it's difficult, you know, and I'm crap with technology as well, so that, that doesn't help. Yeah, me too. You mate. know, with uh, with all that, so it's just sort of getting somewhere, and it's probably it's probably the kind of who you know, not what you know. Now it's just getting in somewhere. And I think once you start work, then it's easier to get work. It's yeah. just it's just getting there. And well, it's like, turned from weeks. Like we from discussed before, out. now I remember who that kid is. I'll have a word there and see if we can yeah, at least talk you up with some people. Yeah, yeah, then... no, that'll be brilliant. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. So. Are you happy with that now? That's the yeah. Well, hopefully, I've explained. It. As I say, I'm not an expert on, on that, but it, it, as I say, it's something to touch on because, as I say, you, you don't think about it really, um, and it, it stunned me. <laughs> you know, I, like, I, I, I don't, I don't I honestly don't know why. You know, obviously, it costs having trials, putting people away, solicitors, and all that. Why it can't be dealt with at a time and given yeah. an appropriate sentence. So, right, you're going to get 18 months. However, you've got no money to pay. So we're going to give you another 18, so there's three years on your goal. That's it, and, and they had enough time, because I say from the time I was arrested and the time I went to jail, it was two, two and a half, three years. So they had enough time, they knew okay, all, they had, they had all the information to send me away anyway. So why they couldn't do all that proceeds of crime and, and tie it in together, and then it's like you say, it's done, dusted, do your sentence. If they're going to add more to the sentence because I can't pay, then at least I know in my head what, what it is. Um, and then you can deal with that accordingly, but... I don't know if it's, it's well mate know, fair dues I hope things work out for the best I, I seriously do um, I'm sure he will it's one I'm, I'm sure you're not a stupid lad um, you know you talk well and that so hopefully get employment get yourself sorted and be able to move on from this eh? yeah with a bit of luck right guys we're going to talk about Forest Bank again now like I said private prison in Salford opened in 99 um, we had a little chat before you know what, we can talk about scumbag managers all day. Um, the, the positions we'll mention, the number one, main man in the jail, got yep. sacked. Yep. Yeah, because basically the prison went to rat shit. Correct. The number two, his deputy, got sacked or yep. moved on. Yeah, yeah, she's gone, yeah. Uh, and then the head of HR got flirted off as well. Yeah, um, she got... Move uh, probably about a month ago now, um, probably maybe a bit longer. She was the girl that when I resigned, I had my interview uh, prior to leaving. Exit interview, with exit you. interview, but you know, it was a, it's a disciplinary or investigation from yep. actually being arrested. So I went to corporate Sodexo, which is based in Salford, because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be having my interview with people that are going to talk down to me for well, me knowing that what I knew about them and ingrained it was into management. So I wasn't having some Scotch fella spit at me and pretend that he knows what he's talking about. So oh, so, be, so basically, you, you've come out of the prison, you've gone to main headquarters, so you don't really know anyone. Exactly, and it, it, it's, uh, for me that was it, a clean slate, I can just say, this was what, this is, and this is all prior to uh, us talking, this was the first instance. And to be fair to the lad, I remember him saying this, you, you went out your way, didn't you? to explain the state of play at Forest Bank. This just weren't bitching saying, oh, managers are toss. This was saying, I did work here, I did care, this needs looking at, this needs looking at, and this needs looking at. Yeah. You, yeah, and, and it, weren't, it weren't just bad blood slagging no, no. it off because you... No, it was, it was a point of, as I say, I left and I was sad about leaving, you know, and I was frustrated about leaving, but I still knew that there's people that I care about in there, a lot of good mates, uh, men and women that do a, do a hard, tireless job 24 hours a day yep. and I know what they put into it and to see the state of the jail from the from three or four years at the end of my career in there it was terrible it was, it was disgusting so I wanted to at least put that point of view where people couldn't because I knew for one the management that wouldn't do it because they're too fearful of either being bullied in there or they just haven't got the backbone because they're in the positions that they're not qualified to be in um, so I was a fourth. Do you know what? I'll, I'll say it, and I'll say it because I've got nothing to lose. And so I sat with this 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 woman. Um, I won't give a name out, but she was independent of Forest Bank. She was yep. corporate, 
Um, so I said how it was, told them about the management structure that we've gone. I can talk about it now because it's Matt Spencer, Sonia Rebs who've gone. And even I can mention now because she's gone anyway. So uh, Rachel Lewis was the girl I spoke to, and I spoke to her for a good two hours on me leaving interview. With good intent. With so good intent. Your, your intention yeah. was yeah. to. I told her exactly, and I said, listen, someone's going to get hurt in that jail. I said, because the management's just abysmal. These people have been put in place, uh, people are getting hurt, which they were doing. The prisoners are not having a good deal because the staff aren't, you know, are losing heart. It's a bad situation both sides. Violence is going up, drugs are going up, security's lax. You need to do something about it. Now, Spencer, Ebbs, blah, 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 they need to go. You need to do something about it. And it wasn't just the one interview I did. You know, I started working in, in a, uh, an engineering place. I was working nights. And I, so she, she went, can you come back and talk to me again? Fine, I did that. I said, right, no problem if it helps. So I did. F I finished my night shift at 8 o'clock in the morning, drove to Salford, spoke to her again. And she assured me, you know, she sat there and said, you know what, I'm going to... And I said, listen, I've heard this before. I said, I've been to management before and I've asked for help, uh, for support for the staff. You, you've not given us any. I said, you know, you, you, you're preaching to the, you know, the choir. You know, I know you, I've heard this before. No, I assure you, I assure you, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to make a difference. Right, okay. And it was, and it, I wasn't explaining it. I didn't just do a hatchet job. I explained who the good managers were. Yep. Explained what good they do, who is respected in the jail. Yep. Who you can promote, if need be. I said these people deserve it, whether on the ground floor in in uniform or whatever. Yep. I said you've got a lot of good staff, and you know you can turn the jail round if you, if you do what you what you should do, you know. And and that involved with your experienced staff that were working elsewhere in the jail industries, gym, different places, OMU, for a certain point of time, getting back on the wings, support the staff that you know need it because these are good staff. That's the toughest job in it. By, on the, by on far, the wings. By far. Pit face and get your managers, get your managers in here because I'm not being funny. The worst thing in the world for me as an Oscar and, and other people's staff, sorry, you're running around like a blue arse fly, you're on your wing sometime on your own. You've got the prison, your dinner times, your breakfast staff, and your tea times, your most you know, your busiest time because you've got 100 lads need feed and blah blah blah. Get me out of doors, I'm ready. Yeah. It's horrible. Trying to watch your back. Trying, trying to, to watch, watch your what's back. going on. Making sure people aren't getting assaulted in the cells, running away to get shortfalls of food that we've spoken about. You know, it's never ending. So, but where are the managers during these points of the day? They're all sat there between the busiest part of your day <laughs> in a group, sat there in a staff restaurant. With Get, a big, getting a good scram. With a big to, box. To be fair, that yeah. restaurant, run by Decent. prisoners, yeah, yeah. cook the food, salad bar, there used to be a salad bar yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah, so you could eat I, healthy. I ate in that twice, me. I used to go five to two when it was just to close and I'd go there five minute just get something to eat dead quick but the rest of the managers or good percentage of the managers they'd be sat there for an hour yeah, and a half yeah. eating biscuits all yeah. day while well, you've run around so and then when I'm running around and I go in there for a quick bite to eat a five two they're all sat there they should be on the wings see um, a, a, a couple of managers uh, I felt really supported by uh, when I were there you've just mentioned Tim White we're only going to mention people in a good light Tim, Tim White, he was F-Wing manager of Rowan. and he was one that would always support you if you went to him. You felt like he'd listen and do something. And I'll tell you now, a couple of ooh, naughty shifts on F-Wing before I left where he was on the landing. So if there's two of you, and we've already said, and one of them's a new member of staff who's frightened to death, and sometimes I were frightened to death, mm -hmm. and they're in the office, having a manager there is massive. Huge. Just having a suit... So, you know, you're trying to deal with something. Right, lad, go and, you go and ask the manager while well, he's that, that sort of thing. That's what that's all you need. That's all you need. And and sat in the office at dinner time, when we've said a lot of managers are, are scranning in the canteen, yeah. sat in the office, so, you know, it's, it's just support. Exactly. It's easy. Easy. Easy as anything. And as I say, the likes of Tim, Jimmy Hodgson, when he was a manager on F-Wing. Yeah, great uh, guy, Jimmy. Mick Higgins, Debbie Ashcroft, Lindsay yeah. Wright. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Breeley, when she was there, there was people there. I'm, I'm probably missing other people, which I'm doing a disservice I to. I know all them. All yeah, good and, stuff. And there's more, you know, and, but what were they? And even, they wouldn't, even be, they wouldn't even be, yeah, Paul Chadwick, they, but they wouldn't even be on the landing. They'd be, they'd be getting your set of keys and unlocking with you. Tim who's, was, who's the guy with the porn sash? Uh, Paul Nash. Good Nashy. lad. Nashy, yeah, uh, the tash went a long time ago. Oh, well, did it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that went a long time ago. But um, those kind of people that would, would even help you unlock, you know, they put lads behind the doors, they'd be, they'd be squaring up to people, uh, giving them, you know, giving you back up if need be. Um, 
but that was far you know those old school managers that wouldn't give wouldn't care about setting up an SMT and licking people's behinds. Yeah. What happened? The culture. SMT. SMT. Senior yeah. management team. Just so you know, Paul's role, Oscar. That was shift manager. Oscar won. SMT senior management team. Uh, so far detached from reality, a lot of them that you know they have no. They're not interested. Tell you what, when you're in office eating your butt and your alarms are going off on F wing, and some poor geezer's trying to deal with someone, half a dozen staff turn up and the Oscar one to deal with it. Not interested. Not. No. Never flinch. No. No. But that culture of, of supporting your staff and being good managers, that waned because they left, or they were that brow beaten because <sighs> SMT just went to tell you what we're going to employ. I could name. I could name fifteen people, but I'm not going to. Nice people, lovely people, out of work. I imagine I never would, would so like be you know friendly yeah. with them or whatever. Yeah. Nice people, but they got put in uniform uh, suits. Sorry, and all they did it was a case of that culture went from being on the wings. They were too scared. They wouldn't make any decisions, even though they just had a pay increase from a senior officer to a manager, which is probably the best part. Twelve hundred quid pay rise. To, to be fair, uh, private sector managers, they get good money. Yeah. Good money. You know what? Once you get out of uniform, way better than public sector, yeah. I would say. But these people were getting huge, huge increases in wages, and their responsibility was to make these decisions. Now, I'm, I'm as a shift manager, fifteen years experience. I'm asking somebody who's been in the job two years, but because this Sonia Ebbs' friend, you know, I'm asking them now. Well, what do you want me to do here? Because I, I need to know an answer. I need to move two lads to a bus. I've got a lad stringing up in SEG who's on 24 hour watch. I need to cover that member of staff because they want to go home at the That's right someone time. who cares as well. That's just terminology. Used, yeah, sorry. But... Yeah, no, just, no, no, no. Yeah. Don't apologise, yeah. right? It's just what we're saying. At the end of the day, you're thinking about that lad in there that needs to be watched. So, you know. Yeah, and you've got a million things, like as I say. Of course say, you have. And it's a case of these these people would. And, it, and it, don't be wrong, they've got a duty of care we all have. So. Just as an idea of somebody who's a, a, a lad um, who's there struggling, self-harming, um, you, may, you may know him all the time, you may know he, all he's doing it is for attention, he wants a canteen or whatever and all that. You may have three people on constant, constant obs. Yeah, you've still got to deal with it, haven't you? You've still got to find time for three yeah. 24-hour shifts. Yep. Now, if you've got no staff to deal with that, so then you know you've got another app review. And you've got one of these managers they're going to sit in that app review and they're all they're going to do to cover their backs because they don't want to make that decision Act say, review is the self harm, self -harm suicide review. document yeah. again so everybody that there is on a self harm document has a review every so often if it's a re if it's a recent uh, self harm uh, and they've cut up or they've they've strung up or something like that then a review will get done i want to ask you something now while you're on this because i've thought about this a lot sadly <laughs> i i would now in the prison service they've done a lot of over promoting uh, fast track promotion you know we, we're working on the basis now if you've been to university and you've got a degree then you're super intelligent yeah. as a manager uh, I would take a good manager from industry you know some some of these managers who move around Marks and Spencers the guy that went in a few years ago started doing the meals you know yeah. he looked at it yeah. he turned the company around and made it profitable yeah I would take first of all you need a good number one but, but I would take a good manager. And a good manager should be managing these managers under him and, you know, fuck off out at canteen. Get out at canteen, yeah. at dinner, yep. go on the wings. That's yeah? it. You That's know, it. come after, come at half one, have half an hour then. It doesn't have to be, as I say, you, you can eat on the wings. You know, I used to, used to have, have uh, managers that sat there, on, you know, with your, with your uh, orderlies eating there, having a scram first. Explain, did, it's, did they still do that when you were there? Which? The you know if I were on F wing, I'd I'd sit down with the yeah, server yeah. lads, yeah. eat can, my yeah. dinner, yeah. and then yeah. get all all the wing out and, and feed it's the done, wing. Yeah, because you need me. to you need to have food. Otherwise, you're not gonna. Because if you can't get off, you're not getting a break. Some days, you know. No, like, you you well, if you're on a wing, you want no, a wing. Exactly. Out, so yeah, if you want to run off quickly and go, I'm just gonna get a butty because the lads are fed. You might have something else happen there. Some lads I might have a fight. You know I never did that. You, you wouldn't get a bus, so that you're not eating. Wing. You're no. not eating for no. you're not eating for six hours or whatever. So you need to eat while you, where you can. Or you might say to your audience, let's just throw a piece of toast under the, the toaster yeah, for yeah. me or something like that. Little things like that. I know it sounds stupid, but like we're talking about SMT, they don't care. They don't care if you vet. 
but do you know as a shift manager or as an SO when you're on there you care about your staff and you go well tell you what mate you've not no, had all day you cared about your staff yeah I know they I do. used to care yeah. about people I, I worked and there's, and there's people there that, and, and there's so many good staff there still lads or uh, girls doing my job that are still there doing it do you know and, and the great people great people and as I say they had to do the same thing I did but the fact that now is the likes of the, the SMT, Rachel Lewis, who was just recently left, as I say, once I, once I spoke to her and told her all this, yeah, I'll put all these things in place, blah, blah, blah. All she did, she took the job of the personnel woman that had left before her, the one that was a, a complicit in a lot of the bullying with Carl Byron, uh, promotions that she was given because she was Sonia Ebbs' friend and blah, blah, blah. She was bullying other people to have left. Um, a good friend of mine who, who left uh, and whatever. Um, so she took that job. Now, the funny thing about it is over a, a month ago since she, since she got walked off the building, if it turns out she's she's got no qualification for that role she was in. She lied on a CV about a job. So all these things that for the last three or four years that she's been involved with, with investigations, people leaving, people sacking, promotions, all that, for all that time, she's had a say in it and she's not qualified. How, to how can a company, yeah, how can a company, or why would a company, and people without background checks into senior positions they were very when I were there Forest Bank they promoted one or two people through politics uh, religion race type things yeah. above lots of other people uh, almost um, you know pick picture postcard look yeah, this yeah, is yeah. our private prison this yeah. this is um, uh, it's like you say when I started they used to recruit outside or they'd recruit from other jails, you know, because if you've got, because promotion used to be... Mike Goodwin, Ivor Woods, public sector, Mike Goodwin, uh, he knew what was going on in his jail. Yeah. If, if he was on Main Street and there was a bell on F-Wing, he would turn up, yeah. the number one governor, and see what was going on. Exactly. Ivor Woods knew everything that was going on in that building. Again, you know, the, the guy had got integrity. I told you before, if they haven't watched it, my exit interview, I mentioned something that really pissed me off. He investigated it and he reported back to me. I'd left the company. Yeah. He didn't have to do that. Yeah. So you've got the pick as a private company of all these, you know, why are you going to put somebody who has no background, no reputation, no nothing in charge of a business? Exactly. Because sadly, it is a business. Yeah, of course it is. And, but the likes we, we spoke about, there's a fellow called Steve Taylor. Bit of a knob. It was all right for me. Don't me wrong. I've never had any. He, any, he but, just started as yeah at a so residence he, he, when I was there. He was quite eye open. Any left, he, he was quite. You know, he talked a good game and whatnot. Some people hated him. Some people liked him. I remember a one so um, board. He interviewed a load of people. They were all crap. So he just didn't promote anyone. Do you know what I mean? Which is the right way. You can't just go, cool. well, I'll tell you what, out of 20 people, these are the least crap. We'll just put them in SO I, positions. Yeah. Because as soon as no. they walk on with a red... You know yourself, some of the red badges that got given out, the prison, the prison, the, the lads senior laugh. officers, next yeah, line the, of promotion. The lads laugh. Have you got that? <laughs> do you know, you take the piss out of the staff and they be like... Rrr. Well, do you, do you know what? I'm all for that. You know, like you say, if no... Just before I left Strangeways, they into or in an interim period, they interviewed five people from high security estate for the job and none of them got it because mm. it was deemed none of them were suitable. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way it should be. And as I say, if your right candidate's not in your establishment, then there should be a process of him, I don't know, whoever is, is excelling in another position, in another jail, but there's no promotion, you know. They used to send them to Peterborough, Peterborough, you know, when Peterborough opened, yeah. a lot of staff went. So that, was a new influx of red badges and, yeah, that, and promotions it's, that came well, yeah. to Forest Bank. There was them opportunities, weren't mm. they? You know, if you're in a private company and they open a new prison, you know, there's opportunities yeah. there for promotion or whatever. Because promotion, be... promotion wasn't, it was difficult. You know, you, they, these positions never came up. Do you, did you, sadly, in public sector, I show shitloads of people who've been in a job who would have been cracking SOs, senior officers, cracking principal officers and cracking governors, but... In, in the public sector, how they did the promotions and that, they couldn't pass a board or... No, and then they got, they got and then they just lost heart, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? And then they just, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll either just do, do lot, the minimum. A lot, of, a lot of officers will have done all the careers as an officer, which is no bad thing. I'm not knocking that. No, you don't no. Have to, some people don't want some it. of them would yeah. have been fantastic managers. Oh, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. And some people just don't want it and go, do you know what? And as the, the job got diluted and 
the way that they offered redundancies for a lot of SOs that left, um, and then they realised that was just the worst idea of all time. Um, and then they promoted again. They didn't have the, the people to give the red Why? To. I, I, see, I don't understand that. If you've got good staff or managers, you know, if, if you're going to make them redundant, we'll just offer them a package to go back down as offices. They did that. Don't let yeah. them go. Yeah, I know. And, and some of them did that. Some of them did take it and went back to PCOs and thought, you know what, I'll, I'll take officers, a step back. Yeah. Roll prison officers, man. Yeah. Um, so a lot of them did that. But they came out with these things that they was, they, all they did, wanted to do was cut, cut corners and, and cut monetary. Um, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there. So what they came up with, we'll take half an hour here, we'll half an hour here, and they used to change the shift patterns. So they changed shift patterns probably six, seven times a year. So this took, a, you know, this is a lot of planning to do, but they never like asked the people on the on the floor, would this work or would this work? So they were coming on and going, well, we'll change your shift. I tell you what, we're going to lock up everyone. So every, well, every member of staff gets a break at one o'clock. So we'll do that. Like public sector. Like public sector. But yeah. that didn't work. So you, you're just a constant, you, you're running your jail from half an hour to half an hour kind of things. And then the other thing, uh, this co they, they come up with this key worker uh, incentive. So what it was, they were getting a load of money from the government to, it's like a personal officer scheme. So if you're a personal officer, you've got a wing of 97 lads. You've all, you all have a set. You, have, you, you might have five cells and whoever's yeah. in them cells, you yeah. know, it, it's like, in principle, it's really good, isn't it? If you've got five is, yeah. cells, yeah. ten lads, you get to know them lads, they got a problem, they, they feel like yeah. you yeah. need to be approachable, don't That's you? That's it. And it's a case that they all had a file in the set, in, in, in the office, and then it went onto the computer. So anybody that wants to have a, a little synopsis of any prisoner, that they go and have a look and go, because you've got comments every two weeks, that yeah, was yeah. you, you know, yeah. have to put, he's yeah. had a good week, he's had a bad week, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Joe, and then those files would go to the SO. If they were good, the senior officer then would give them, per, you know, to enhance stores, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. So, but then, so they had that, but then they thought, well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna, we've got all this money now. It's called this key worker incentives. So what they're gonna do? Every member of staff will have certain prisoners, but you've got to take them off the wing for forty-five minutes every week and discuss the sentence pro, you know, whatever yeah. they want to do, how they, and all this, which is great in theory. So all this money that they were receiving, um. Well, who's, where's this extra staff coming from? They never give us any extra staff to take these prisoners off the wings. So, you, you, just in simple terms, you've already got bare staff on the wings. Yeah. Two staff. Yeah. And then one of you is supposed to be leaving the wing 45 minutes to yeah. chat to a prisoner. And it wouldn't would just be the, the, the staff on the wings. It'd be people in OMU or people or whatever. So, that kind of thing. So, so then... They weren't giving you, they weren't giving us all the wings or any. So what they do, they said, we'll lock, we'll lock, start locking the wings down for longer then, because what that happened then, that will free up the extra staff to take these lads off the wing. So all you're doing then is just locking your wing down. So they were getting more money again on top as a business, but they weren't putting any into it. So it was just more, more pressure for the staff because all then you had a certain Scotch manager who was responsible for that. He just come down kicking off, saying to me. Why haven't you let this lad off to go and do his key work? You know, Campbell, I, I have uh, Campbell. Um, that was that worked, didn't it? So I was like, I can't. We physically, do you want the, do you want the whole jail locking down for this? And he was under pressure. He was yeah, getting, but, he was but, getting but the, but the thing is, it's realization. That idiots come out with this. It cost that key work scheme that went in public sector cost millions. Yeah. Some somebody just, so far removed who yeah. is clueless. You know, it all it, a lot of these things. Another one that really puts safer custody training. Yeah. Prison service, always going about safer custody training. Well, we're training it. It's training at the end of the day. It's not going to save lives or make you a better officer, is yeah. it? Yeah. The realisation is... It's, it's just a thing that they come up with, but it wasn't like liaise with how we best are we going to do it. It was right. this is what we're going to do. You're going to do it and you're going to make sure you do it. And if you don't do it, we're going to scream at you as much as we can and bully you. Find out the shite reasons. Managers. Shite managers, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm even finding out over the last few weeks since we've been doing these these podcasts, I'm having people contact me. You know, for, I don't even know them. They're still working in Forest yep. Bank, and they're saying thanks for you know for highlighting it. You know, I've only just been told the last couple of days. You know, they're working with a company, an outside agency, Forest Bank now, to actually structure the managers that they've got to actually work with them because they know. They're that bad. <laughs> so apparently they've weeded out a few that the you know that the, the, the weaker on, that aren't weaker producing. bullies. Yeah, the weaker bullies, yeah. Other ones that just don't, unfortunately aren't capable of being in that position. So they've got this outside agency working with them. 
So, I mean, it seems to me now, looking from the outside and from people, or from what they're telling me. Well, for me, they, they've recognised they've got a problem. If you're bringing yeah. somebody in to manage your managers, then you know you've got a problem. You've got a big problem. And as I say, what we're talking about with improvement notices and that kind of I'm thing. I'm checking that as a positive because somebody somewhere said we need to from, sort from it. From what I'm here, I mean, it's easy probably now that they've got rid of the three. The, it's a new broom sweep clean, doesn't it? So they can yeah. say, well, that will put all that to one side. I mean, from what I'm hearing now, as I say, they've got a head of residence in charge of the residents. Now, the residents in the worst state it's ever been in, in Forest Bank. So that's all the wings, isn't it? That's all the wings, yeah. So, ABC... Is this, are we going to talk about special measures now, then? Yeah, yeah, that will that'll, that'll dovetail Which in. is, just, for, for me, well, I'll tell you what I think it is. Not literally... Special measures. Forest Bank is putting special measures. So, someone's come, had a look, and it, it is how the prison's been run, and it's the overall condition of the prison. Um, yeah. Basically, yeah. it was run down. Well, run down's not even the word, yeah. I mean, so over to you. They've been mate. given instructions to, obviously, like we say, to improve the, the jail. I mean, from the actual state of the actual jail, from when somebody's come in, whether it be outside audit, which I believe it was, which it normally is these type Cons of. Type what of are them. the consequences of not coming up to scratch? Monetary fines, um, which the obviously they've got a home office. Um, was there a chance it go from private to public sector prison? Of course there is, yeah, yeah. However, I, I don't yeah. think it no, will. I don't think it will. It'll probably go to it'll go to another private company. Um, somebody else will take it over um, because that's where the money is now. But yeah, the worst case scenario, and that's only going to be worse for the management. It's not going to they're not going to get rid of the staff. No, you know what I mean. It's only going to be good for the staff if it ever happened. But they've always they've always had that underline. Oh, they always used to beat it with us when we were there. We've yeah. got a contract, and if we don't hit these contracts, you know, we could get taken over. And it, and we were like, so what? Didn't so the, did Sinek, so used to have Blakenhurst prison. Yeah. So Blakenhurst has gone private public private or public private one way or other yeah but basically what people don't understand if a jail's private and then it goes to public sector run by the government nothing changes pretty much you might get rid of one or two managers but them staff there change the uniform change the terms and conditions and it's still the same jail is yeah, it not yeah basically yeah i mean even Sedec even forest bank that we was was green it was ukds it was sedex yeah. oh it's been a couple um of other Another Calix was another one. It had a few badge names changed, yeah. and that cost millions to change your badge name. So yeah, so yeah, you have these improvement notices. See, like we were saying before, it's from from day one, from when you're an officer on the wing, you know what your daily duties are. Yeah. You know you you need to get exercise out. You need to feed the lads. You need to be get them out at specific times, locked up at specific times during the times when you get a minute. Then you'll do your cell searches. Cell searches. Explain what a cell search is. Cell search. Um, well, it is exactly what it says on the tin. You've got to go into a cell and search that cell. Um, if there's two prisoners in there, there's a specific way of doing it. Um, you have to get one prisoner out, obviously for dignity reasons, to search them. Um, and then you've got to basically do the do the yep. search of the cell of whatever what's in there. You've got to ask the prisoners, but is everything in the cell yours? Um, if they say it is, and you find something, then you've got it on record, you know, between yep. two of you that, that, that they're saying and that, that's what you've got to do. So you've got a certain amount of cell searches every every month. You get that sent down at the start of the month from security to say, right, there's your standard cell searches, whatever you've got to do. So you do them randomly. If you think there's information that you want, you've got something in that cell, a weapon, um, a mobile phone, drugs, or whatever, you, or, you know, you go into that cell, you can do as many cell searches as yep. you want. Um, but they take time as well as that which is your cell fabric checks which is CFC right Ex explain what fabric checks or locks bolts and bars yeah that was what it's called, called. The start in the early days lock bars and bolts or CFCs which is basically every day you've got to go into your cells every cell on a wing and you've got to check that everything's working ba properly. basically you don't have a lot of time do you no. so no. you go in check the door get a bars a bang have a quick yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a joke that it's like... Check the cell bell. Yeah, yeah, it's like Shawshank Redemption with the poster. You know, you're checking to basically make sure the worst case scenario is nobody's tunnelled out or got throughout the windows. Yep. So, I know those sheets, you'd have a little tick sheet, you'd have, you'd have your little, your, your board, and then you go round. You try and do as quickly as you can, because to be fair, if you're on the same wing every day, you pretty much know what cells yeah, are sound. So, you know what cells, you just go Would in. you report any damage if a window was... Explain, right, the, win the windows at Forest Bank, you, you have as it were, got a couple of bars, but basically it's perspex. Yeah. 
perspex windows, no glass, and there's a little vent. That little vents underneath, which is that does enough? jack which, shit. Yeah, yeah. So they're the cells. So if you're going to a cell and you know, you know, you, you mark it down every day, so a bell's not working or whatever, or I mean, you, you can't have a bell not working because if somebody's decides to self harm, um, and then they made a bad yeah, job yeah. of it, and yeah. they press the cell cord buzzer, and it doesn't work, they could bleed to death in the cell. So yep. you can't leave anyone without a cell, a cell buzzer. So things like that, that needs doom straight away. Yep. A hole in the window, if somebody's burns a hole out the window for whatever reason, which normally is to get, you know, to get a line out of the window to, to get drugs or whatever. Explain what a line is, literally. Oh uh, yeah, like yeah, fishing. Is fishing is basically yeah, that's it. Yeah, so if a throwover comes over the walls, which is a parcel of whatever unauthorized contraband that comes over the wall, it's quite funny. The, the lengths that the lads can come up with ideas to get these drugs. So they'll throw, they'll rip the bed in, get a coat hanger at the end of it, get out the cell window, hook it, bring it through as best they can. If you've got a hole in the window. If it's a small one, you mark it down. Um, and every day, every piece of paper that you do, it gets put onto like an A4 sheet. So if it's the January the 1st, you'll sign on that you've done in the morning shift, you'll do your initials, you've checked them bars, you've checked them cells, you put your how many on the yard for exercise, you put all that, that's done. Every one of them sheets gets ta tallied up, put in a box, and at the end of the month or two months as a senior officer, you'd make sure every bit of paperwork, there was a, a box ticked in every one. Because if an audit comes along and your paperwork is crap, then you're going to get a bollock in because if that audit, a bad audit, then it's not going to be on it's managers, it's going to, it's going to be on you. Yeah. Um, so all these sheets that you have to do, they were all auditable. So every day that those sheets were done. Explain the windows when it went into special measures, what they were like then. The windows, I've not been there for, for a while now, So, but I, I know for a fact, because people are telling me, from when Trevor Short and a few others delegates came in, not long ago, this is when the, the top man went, Spencer, there was lads with their arms, legs out the windows, all the cells, panes of glass are gone. Yeah. So, I, the yard, and yeah, clean. exactly, because you've got outside people coming in from outside agencies because you get a lot of because of private prison you get a lot of visitors coming in to have a look at the jail because you're doing initiatives to get prisoners back into work some good some initiatives as well amazing initiatives so if you're coming in and you're getting outside agencies coming in they don't want to see a shit all they want to see a good clean because it's an environment that the prisoners are being looked after if, if you've got windows out and you've got cell you've got floor you know exercise yards full of crap yeah. that doesn't look good for anyone no so and the worst case now one more on that on bars forest bank is a new jail there's very few. The cells are designed to be ligature free. Yep. Now, I've dealt with situations where people have killed themselves it's in a cell. We'll call them safer cells because safer they're, cells. Not, yeah, they're not, yeah, they're not like a standard perfect. prison cell. If, if someone, yeah. But if those windows are out, those bars are a ligature point. Yeah, of course they are. So anybody can get, if you've got 10 cells out, which I believe there's more on every wing, that is a potential someone to hang themselves every night. Which is decide, which I can't get how that's a safe, from a safer custody point of view or an act. If someone's on an act book, and there's a window out. I'd, how how the how well, they, so I don't know how that's security that point of view. Just having a a, a pain of that perspex out is massive. If it Huge. if there's multiple, it's, it's very dangerous, isn't it? Like say. It is. yeah, it, as I say, it, that, that's what you got to think of. And as an SO or, or as an Oscar one or an order officer, if you know and you've not done anything about that, and the the worst does happen that uh you know a weapon gets in or someone gets hurt by that weapon or God forbid someone kills himself. Then you're in coroner's court and you've got to say well you knew that cell because on that day as an so that cell was out of use or that cell was marked as a hole in the window so it's fair to say is it not that if there is panes of perspex missing out of windows that's as bad as it gets so if yeah. everything else is on a level with that then the, it's the not, prison's not, it's not fit very for good. purpose now i've been as i say a lot of people have got in touch with me over these podcasts and said you know talked about it and said you know it's good that a voice is, is being there because we're still there we're trying to do it and it's a case of you know it's one of them things that it's not my agenda now to say what's bad because I'm not there but when you've got you know you've got a head of residence now from what I'm getting told is that person they're never on the wings they're never to support the staff I think there's 10 outstanding grievances that person's got currently with staff about bullying one which i know for a fact there's a 30 plus page grievance gone in about that person of how bad the issues are staff are leaving uh, again in the last couple of probably the last three four weeks another four or five staff who have been there years and years have left yeah, I know good one. staff 
Um, Brownie's got out, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, I was speaking to Brownie the other day, he's doing his own thing. Um, Brownie. <laughs> but uh, a lot of, and you know, and as I say, but this, again, the head of residence is the one that, that they're responsible for those wings. If those wings are uninhabitable, which they are, then how's that person still doing I, I, his I job? I would say again, me, a good manager is somebody who cares about the troops. Yeah, that's all you have to do. Yeah. You need to be approachable, and you know, if there's an issue, seem deal to be it. dealing with that yeah, issue. I mean, deal with it, as I say, that's all it takes. And as I say, just as a bit of a moral support, because as, as you know, a manager takes off a lot of stress off the staff, because instead of coming to a, a badge, they're gonna go to the, the manager and say, look, this is what I've got issues with. And if they're invisible, which they generally are, then as I say, and that's all, that's all, that's all the problems were. And that's all where it came from, was from the people you know, in charge. And it's not going to get any better. I mean, it's good that they've, they've highlighted, which it's, if they can't see that anyway, the, the, the problems within the staff. But do, you, do, you think, do you think that is a, it's bringing an outside agency to look at management or structure, whatever, do you think that is, not a safety net, wrong word, but, but they've done it to show that they are... Yeah, I mean, as a... It, that, that may be so. I mean, it may, they willing, might have to be looking to do something. It might be a token gesture, but it's not going to solve the problems. Um, you know, you can still someone. You can sit someone in a room for for a week. Uh, you know, and, and tell them this is what you know, how a manager is supposed to be. But if they haven't got the grounding of working the landings for X amount, you know, if you've got uh, people in suits that have been there two years, they've got a degree, and they're twenty five year old. That's all well and good. But you know they've still got to have a modicum of being on the wings uh, and being in these areas, getting a getting a, a taste of working in CSU reception, healthcare, or whatever. Um, and as I say, but if you've still got the same people, you can change a couple at the top. But if you've still got the same underneath, and you still you still got that same principle of of you know of not helping or not wanting to. You know, you've always needed, for me, you've always needed a buffer between the wings as a manager or, a, or an SMT. Yeah. You need someone that can actually go between, who's visceral, you know, and, and has got a connection with the staff on the wings. But they didn't have that. It was just pff, SMT and, and the wing staff and then the managers that were just beaten by both I, sides. When, when I was there, I always felt that the wing managers obviously were connected, but anyone above that was... No, they were quite you know, happy. They, they, weren't, they weren't approachable. No, uh, Mike Goodwin, you could approach him. Yeah, he, he was wandered around Mike's the jail. He, he yeah. wandered around the jail on his own. Ivor Wood, you could approach him yeah. again. No fear, you know. If he was in the centre talking, excuse me, he would speak to you. But other than that, a lot, a lot of their managers, they'd come down and bark at you, you know, shout yeah. you down if something were wrong. But they were not approachable. They weren't about, and you know, it's like if you're having a bad day. Do you know what I mean? And you could be, you know yourself, just a standard day can be a bad day. Yep. But then if you've got a manager that can give you five minutes or give you, you know, a bit of support or it, it can make, you know, of change your day. You know, it's, it's something small and it'll just be a little thing. But then if you've got a manager coming down and all they want to do is pick holes, you know, I mean, we used to get them, we used to come on the wings, the Scottish one we were talking about. He'd come on a wing and your wing could be mint. You know, the lads are quiet and all that, but he'd look under a bin and see a bit of dust. And he'd kick off about this bit of... Do you know what? That used to piss me off so yeah. much. Piss me off so much that he, he, on a good day... And we, we all... A lot of officers do it with prisoners. You write them up. If they have a slanging match with you, you'll write them up. If they've behaved for three months, there's no entry saying... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, got... Exactly. And exactly managers that. who do that are exactly the yeah. same. Yeah, we're all willing to, to, to go on about the bad things. And, as a, you know, like you say, you're quite right. With prisoners as well, do you know what I mean? You're all ready to say, oh, he he swore at me today. Yeah. But you're not willing to say, well, do you know what? He, he helped the lad out in the showers. He helped him get in the yeah, shower, yeah, give exactly, him a shower gel, exactly. looked after him. And things like that. And you see on a daily basis. And the staff, like, again, I've worked with so many good staff. Oh, you know, that you think about and go, God, do you know how good they were? And then some of them even forget that they were even there. They might have only been there two years or whatever, but they just, and they only left because of, you know, the, the management. They yeah. only left because they either weren't valued, got spoken to like crap, you know, or and they thought more of themselves or unsupported. Do you know, I was just speaking to someone today, um, you know, and they were talking about how, how they were bullied by the Sonia Rebs and whatever. And that was a regular occurrence. You know, every day she she got a bullying. She actually got a bullying proven about it, and then she got promoted a week later. But it was allowed to just slide. 
you know, and it, but nobody wanted, to, nobody wanted to do anything, and you're like, how I can you see I, it? I, I honestly think, mate, that um, again, decent number one, deputy governor. I look at strange ways. We probably had eight. Most of my time there, we had two. Yeah, and then we probably had eight in last. I don't know, maybe three or four years, yeah. And obviously, some of them weren't weren't sparkling or whatever. And it makes a massive difference. But yeah. but a good number one, you, you're gonna know what your manager up. Besides knowing what, you know. The likes of Trevor Short, he was he was brilliant. I mean, even Ian Whiteside's gone back now, and I never had a problem with him. Do you know? I mean, he always wanted to be the top man. Did he, he ever cut? Yeah. He didn't. I know. He you yeah. know he's got previous for that. Yeah, yeah. he was an hairdresser. Um, I believe. But he was uh, he was always approachable to me. I know a lot of people didn't get on with him, but I just take you know you take people as you find. I know sometimes people. No, you, you have to, mate. Yeah, um, definitely. But Ian's back now, and, and he he left. I think where did he go? I think he went Bronzefield. He went as a number one in Bronzefield. I think I think it was Bronzefield. And um, it was getting that bad. I even emailed Ian a while back because it was getting that bad. We couldn't staff our jail, so we were getting sent staff from Bronzefield. Bron is it Ashford? Uh, uh, Ash down London way, yeah, down it? London way. It's on Bell. Yeah, so we were getting staff sent from there on a, like a, a Thursday. So they were covering our weekends. So they'd come in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever, and then they'd go back Sunday. Yeah. This is how bad it was. So you were getting, they were getting put up in a hotel round the corner, yeah. coming in, doing this shit. And they were great people, do you know what I mean? But they were, they were just an extra set of keys. Yeah. This is how bad it got that we couldn't staff the jail. And I sent an email to him saying thanks. And the staff, were we had a good, you know, they were dead sound, they weren't. Because some just come in, they're not asked because they're on mega money, they're on probably double time or whatever they were on to yeah. doing it. And now I sent him an email saying thanks for the staff. They were they were really good. They got on well with the staff, the prisoners. And they were credited to the jail because they were, they, were, they were sound. But that's how bad it got. That you forget about it's actually that bad. You're getting substitutes, getting sent. You know, from other jails to work in your jail just because you can't staff it. When, when it was doing all right, strange ways, but we were short staffed at one bit, round about, I don't know, two, maybe not two nine, two ten, two eleven. We got a lot of detached duty who, yeah, again, yeah. were from other jails, got put up. And do you know what? There was some absolutely cracking yeah. staff come. Didn't didn't just take the paycheck. You know, they they come on your unit, right? I, I don't know what I'm doing. What do you need me yeah, to yeah. do? Brilliant. Well, that's it, and it's sometimes... Smedders. Yeah. <laughs> Brunty. Yeah, and it's good that sometimes like, it's like that because it's a different approach, it's a different set of... I mean, like yeah. you say, some of them just come on, even if you wait on another wing, some people can't be asked, they're just an extra set of keys yeah. to go through the motions. But then you get some people, because, and then some people just want to break and go, I'll tell you what, I'll work down, I'll work there for a bit. And then they come back and go, bloody hell, that was a good jail, or that was a bad jail, or whatever. Um, yeah, but we used to get out all the time because it, it was just generally, you know, un, you know un, <laughs> unstaffable. Um, but hopefully, as I say, Ian's come there and, and, he, and he turns it round. I don't know how he's going to do it. What, is he number one? He's thinking he's number one. I don't know if it's a permanent position or that's just a, a stopgap. Is it still in special measures? I don't know if it's come out or not yet. As I say, I've, I've not, I'm not in the know because I'm not there. I can only go off what people saying. I just know the fact that how bad it is still. Um, as I say, with the residence issues, the staff with the problems with the man at their head of residence. Um, it's not a happy place, and as I say, the people that have, have only just left, a couple of people that I was speak, speaking to, they're saying the same thing. You know, it's it's not changed. It's there's still the bullying element to that, um, with regards to, to the staff. Um, but as I say, whether it just needs a whole new, you know, like you say, recruit from elsewhere, from outside, uh, not prison, because it's all all, I, I, all, I think all it good, is, 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 is it's managing people. Well, any, any any good person can look at a business, see what's wrong with it. And if it's communication and you're not supporting your... I, I, we have discussed briefly in one of the chats, didn't we? Actual retention of staff. Yeah. And public sector seems the same to me now. It's just through the door, training, you know, two days, two weeks, two months, two years gone. Yeah, and, no it's, retention. It, and it's, it's, it's a costly exercise because, you know, it costs thousands to obviously to go through that nine weeks training anyway, just, just for actual money you know employing people for two months just to do the training then you obviously got the training aspect to it of getting people in outside agencies you go through all that so it's an expense so it, it, like any business if you're if you are a business you invest in your staff that that's primarily your main thing that you've got to look at because if i've got rubbish staff then my product's gonna be rubbish at the end of the day right the easy way to look at it any any generic supermarket yeah 
they, they, they probably recruit him, but they have a hard core of staff, don't yeah. they? If if every supermarket changed the staff every six months or whatever, they'd be rat shit. The business would be. Exactly. But nobody seems to care. No, and it, it was like you look at it and going, how have you let, like, like we spoke about cash in transit, I could whittle off. Even Will, Dave Will, a good lad who left. There's tons of them, tons of lads that went to that place. Boys and girls, sorry. Probably 30, 40 people in the space of six months. And you're saying, why? why? They're going to a lesser paid job. There's no reason lesser for pay, that. Lesser pay, less stress. Less probably stress. Probably shifts that are better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I say, I've got a couple of good lads at work there, Jonesy and Pat that are working there. You know, and um, you're saying to them, why are these people leaving? Because why am I? Primarily for, as, as a selfish point of view, why am I having my staffing sheet are like this and I've lost Des Ashton, I've lost Andrea Fair, I've lost whoever, whoever, whoever. Why why are they leaving and I'm stuck with brand new staff? You know, that, that can't be good for anybody. It's and tough, it, isn't it, mate? It is. Um, and even now, as I say, you know, I, you know, you worry about you worry about people, but the problem is that, that even people you think, oh, they've just left, um, you know, and that's it. But it's not, they have a, still have a lot of thought about Forest Bank and they still love it. You know, I can speak to like Brownie and I spoke to a few other people and, and they start talking about things that happened five, six years ago or 10 years ago maybe. Yeah. And they've had to leave, they got sacked or they resigned because they weren't treated right or whatever and they lost a job for something stupid. Um, and it affects them, as I say, it's affected the family life, it affects the home life, it affects the monetary, you know, financial, they've still got mortgages to pay. And all these people just went, no, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll get rid of him, we'll get rid of her, we'll forget them, you know, and then just just gone, you know, gone without a thank you. Because people used to leave, I remember mate, Alex Camilleri, he's a good lad, he's going to be a police officer. I think he'd been there 12, 13 years or whatever, just not even a thank you, not I, even I a thank you when he some left. I think something worth mentioning, yeah, you've said that about mortgage and that some, some people, uh, do fall into the poverty trap, don't they? Because all, although the money, what is it, between 18, 22 grand or something, yeah. there's always going to be all the time. You <laughs> of can course, yeah, you can earn a, a lot of money. You, you can't, and you know what, at the point of time, you, the funny thing, I was only thinking about this the day when we were talking about what we're going to talk about. We used to get called up as, as Oscar ones or and the, um, the staffing team. Leslie Webster and who, there's a few others that, that, that did it. And he'd come up and say, look, you've, you've used your budget, you've used too much overtime. It's not sustainable, this. We can't, you can't keep on. Why have you used him or her in that position? Why have you, why have you, because you should do every time you put, you'd go around begging. Because yeah. you'd walk in a sheet and you'd, you know, you'd, you've got five, six, or you've had two uh, escorts go out with your bed watches or whatever, or you've got a, a dying relative that you've got to, you've got to send out or whatever. So you know you've got gaps in the afternoon. So you, if you're not on all day, you're going to cover them gaps for your mate coming on because you don't want them to be in the shit. So every morning you're ringing around and you ring around your sheet and you go, hey mate, any chance you can do some overtime for me this afternoon? Fucking hell, I've got something on. And you're like, I know mate, but can you help me out? This was every day. And all these staff would do putting, it. You were putting on your mates, weren't you? Oh, big time, big time. And you look <laughs> and you'd be like, but then you say, you, so you felt horrible sometimes. You go, do you remember when I, you know when you went home, yeah, listen, you, know, you know when you went home where you had to go and I never put it on the sheets but nobody knows about it but I did you a favour. I wouldn't ask but I'm on my ass. They said I just need you for five hours and he'd go, well can we can do general duties, I need a break off my wing. And you go, yeah, I'll give you general duties. So which is a bit of a break, I'll send you out on an escort. Sound, I'll do it for you. Or I'll do it for Francie or I'll do it, you know what I mean? That was every day, weren't it? Every day. So, but then you'd, so then your sheet would be, fuck, some days it'd be like, your sheet was full. Because you literally had to staff. Now I'm not saying it was, I've got me, you, I've got 10 lads around me in the hub of doing a medication and we look dead good. I mean, I'm doing it for a reason. I'm not filling the, this overtime sheet in because I want loads of staff. Desperate. I'm desperate and now that must, it looks did, a lot. Did you, did you pretty much run on bare minimum staff every single day yeah. of your career? Yeah, definitely, definitely. If you've got three, right, if you've got three staff just to general duty staff, and you got your wings. If you got three staff in your jail to escort or respond or do something, you you you're happy. You know that you we laugh. You go, oh, I've got a fat. We, we, I've got fat staff. I, I remember doing weekends. Never yeah. had no. Oh, general weekends. Duties. No, we didn't have anything. No, we didn't have anything. I, I I've done it, and we've all done it. I've sat there doing medication with Mick Higgins uh, on him as the, <laughs> I'm doing God Watch. He's getting the lads down. He's God in the watch, suit. checking that prisoners are swallowing yeah. their medication. Checking it. He'd be there in his trench coat, looking like uh, Edward Woodward. 
Like the equaliser, and we'd be, we'd do it Mickey all day. Mickey Higgins equaliser, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but say so weekends were just we just written off. But and, and as I say, the, the poor staff, they, you know, they'd be dreading it. Do you know, like you know, on a Friday they yeah. go oh, fucking weekend. Do you know what? It's yeah, gonna be I did. I did. I did. And uh, you know, if we get through it a weekend, the Sunday once once like lock up gets called and roll count. You were like, Pfft. it was, weren't it? It was yeah. a proper relief. Yeah, it was just like we got through, we got through it, and then you'd have like, you know, you then you'd be waiting. Then you just make sure everyone's banged up because normally your fights normally the last five minutes of a bang up or whatever. Yep. You just open, nothing goes off. You don't have a personal alarm, or you don't have a code blue or a code red, and then you'd be like, Pfft. and then Monday, the, you, you know, the suits would come back in on Monday, and then they'd sit there. So yeah, so we're going back. So this overtime sheet, so we'd say, right, you've, you know, it's, it's costing us too much. So then you'd have arguments and, and you'd be like, how the fuck am I supposed to staff your jail? If and then you'd and then you'd look and go, well this this person, this Dave Larson, or he's done too many hours, he's done 120 hours overtime this month. He's on a ban or he's restricted, you cannot use him for overtime. And you'd be like, well, what are you talking about? He, he, he's earning too much. If if he So then he'd, so then he'd say that and you'd moan and you'd go, Well, how am I best how am I supposed to Staff, you he's not doing it for his own like I, tons of people, but he's not doing it. He doesn't want to be sat here in the jail doing 24 hour shifts, which he used to do. I said, He's doing it to help you out. How am I going to staff it if you're not going to pay him? Paul, how many years did you do, mate? I did 15 in total as an as a shift manager. I did about eight as a shift manager. And, and looking nine. back now, do you do you wonder how you got through that? In the early days, is there a sense of relief at all, even though obviously you've been to prison, you know. Um, a little bit no I'd, I'd still i'd still give me left arm to be there to be fair um um i didn't it, back in the day you just think when we had good staff and that and then you had good managers and that it was easy Do you know even though you had shit shit days the job was a, it was it was a piece of piss because you knew you all had someone to rely on do you know what i i i've thought about this a lot like so when i worked on healthcare at strange ways um you can have a really shit week tough you know yeah, yeah. um one at nurses and knock up a bait and butter weekend and that's all I'd remember about that week <laughs> and a bait and butter you'd forget that you yeah. had six shit days yeah yeah and that's how it is isn't it? yeah you'd, and you'd, you'd just pick your little you'd get a little victory every now and then do you know what I mean or it might be something good you know it might, it might be you know you've had a lad who's just been cutting up all weekend and you've had if you're working in healthcare you've had that all day do you know what I mean all day you're answering this buzz and you're talking to this lad and he's got mental issues or he's got problems at home with his wife or kids or god forbid whatever and you know it's easy to look and go well he's in jail fair enough and i might i might i better be like early on in my career or maybe even in my career because i've seen it on the other side and i've been inside myself now you know i might have been guilty of that and say well he's, he's inside we've all done that but if you've had a break you know if you've stopped the lad from cutting up and he's give you the blade or do you know what i mean you've got him out of his cell he's he's come off constant obs and you sat with a brew and watched the telly with him you know what I mean? And got him out yeah, and had a amazing. chat. Then sometimes that makes all the difference. So like, it was rewarding then? Yeah, yeah. I look back now and go, wow, how great was it? Do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, the last three three years has been horrendous, but only of my own doing. But I wouldn't really have changed. The amount of laughs and look back now and the amount of friendships, which I know I've lost those friendships for that reason because of what I did. And that's, that's sad. Um, and, you know, I look back and I wish obviously that wasn't the case but I still think about my mates in there now and I'll sort of good laughs we had and, and I wish them all the best and that's why I kind of think we did this started and at the start because I thought well I'll just go and I'll I'll vent a little bit and then you sort of have it I remember talking to me mate um, and he said we'll try not to do it that way try and you know reflect well, do you, do you, on people who are still there uh, and how val you know you value them and that, that's what's more about just to say you know what well listen if, if you've got a bad manager a bad manager you know, that, that's not venting or whatever, a lot of stuff. For me, you've been very positive about the job you did, how you did the job, you know, um, it was allowed to run down. There is a lot of bullying and stuff like that, which is, you know, it's a sad state of affairs, but... Have you got anything else you want to touch on? No, not really. As I say, um, 
hopefully, as I say, there'll be things in line. I'm going to try and get this podcast done. Um, it'll be on Twitter well, if just, anyone watches. Just get in touch, mate. If yeah. you need any help, not that I'm the best technical person, but. Well, I've got a mate who seems to think he knows, and he's like, do you know what? We can do it, and then we'll get involved with the, the, the ex Forest Bank staff. We can have a look at maybe getting ex prisoners on and talking about stuff. And it might, you know, as I say, I'm going to hopefully do talks uh, and try and give something back with regards to maybe colleges, universities and that kind of thing, which would be something I'd like to do. Um, but no, I want to thank you for, for being on here. Do you want to, uh, when this pock has dealt with or whatever, come back and we'll have a chat? Yeah, yeah, that'll be good, yeah. yeah. I'll uh, I'll get on to that lad I know, um, put you in contact with him. Yeah, great. Uh, I think that'd be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and do you know what? Uh, people might think this is strange. I think you can be proud of yourself, mate. Job you did. Uh, you obviously care about people you work with. Uh, we've mentioned some people. There's many more good people who have worked there a long time, and not a long time. Um, so yeah, it's been no. a positive experience. I've no. enjoyed talking to you. Your honesty has absolutely shone through integrity and all the rest. So, hopefully, you have the best Christmas possible. Yep, yeah, yeah. And everyone in prison, either side of the door, um... Yeah. Thanks, Paul. No, thank you. Seriously, yeah. Thank you. Job's a good one. Paul, cheers, guys.